Hello everyone, I'm going to tell you all the ways to approach you all questions on dementia. Firstly, we need to know that although all types of dementia present with decrease in cognitive function and decrease in memory, there are special features in each of them which help us distinguish one from another. In this video, I'm going to point out what's unique in each type of dementia so that you can easily spot them in a vignette and get to the diagnosis. Note that patients with dementia are generally brought to the doctor by either a friend or a family member. The first one is Alzheimer's disease. The onset of dementia in Alzheimer's disease is very slow. Short-term memory loss would be the initial sign. When patients are asked what they are told just a few minutes ago, they tend to confidently give the wrong answer. Cognitive changes will lead to decrease in ability to take care of oneself, prepare meals, clean and other daily activities. Personality changes will present late in people with Alzheimer's disease. The APP gene codes for amyloid precursor protein. This protein is responsible for the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. Since chromosome 21 has the APP gene, patients with Down syndrome have a higher chance of getting Alzheimer's. On a head CT, cortical atrophy can be seen. Due to the decrease in the size of the brain, the sulci look deeper and the gyri look narrower. The second one is vascular dementia. The word vascular makes us think of blood vessels and this is exactly what is involved in the pathogenesis of this type of dementia. When there is decrease in blood supply to a part of the brain, it can cause an ischemic stroke. The patient's history will include multiple incidents of focal neurological deficits such as losing sensation in their hands six months back or not being able to move the left side of their body three days ago. This occurs due to repeated infarcts in different parts of the brain. As far as the dementia is concerned, there is a stepwise decline in function. Clues to this would be words like mild forgetfulness in the vignette. This is different from Alzheimer's where the short-term memory loss is very intense. The risk factors for this type of dementia is history of stroke, hypertension, etc. On imaging, multiple cortical and subcortical infarcts can be seen. There could also be deep white matter changes in the brains of people with vascular dementia. Frontotemporal dementia is also known as pig disease. It is very interesting as it presents with personality changes. A typical presentation would be one where a patient's family member complains that the patient is behaving inappropriately, is very aggressive and breaks social rules. The family member would also mention that the patient has never behaved like this before. Frontotemporal lobe atrophy could be seen on imaging. I remember this by the letter P. P for pick and P for personality change. Patients can also present with progressive aphasia. Lewy body dementia. The symptoms of Lewy body dementia is pretty similar to Parkinson disease. So by now, you would have guessed that this type of dementia yeah, presents, presents with a movement disorder. It can be differentiated from Parkinson disease and other types of dementia by the following features. The onset of movement disorder and the onset of dementia is less than one year apart in Lewy body dementia. We should note that patients with Lewy body dementia could also have REM sleep behavior disorder. This is a disorder where patients act out their dreams while they are asleep. The cognition in these patients will be fluctuating so their level of alertness and attention will keep varying. And most importantly, these patients will have visual hallucinations. I remember this by reading it as hallucinations. Normal pressure hydrocephalus is very easy to diagnose while solving questions. All you have to look for is a triad of ataxia, urinary incontinence and cognitive dysfunction. On head CT, the ventricles will appear dilated.
In normal pressure hydrocephalus, the ventricles enlarge and compress the surrounding brain tissue. This compression gives rise to symptoms. This can be treated by placing a shunt or draining the cerebrospinal fluid by lumbar puncture. The last one is creutzfeldt jakob disease. This is caused by abnormally folded proteins known as prions. In these patients, the cognitive function declines rapidly. Like big disease, patients will have early behavioral changes. What distinguishes the two is that patients with creutzfeldt jakob disease experience myoclonus and seizures. So if there's a patient with sudden brief uncontrolled muscle contraction and has low cognitive function, we should suspect this disease. This is different from Huntington disease which presents with continuous jerking limb movements known as chorea and declining cognitive function. Family history will help us diagnose Huntington disease because the inheritance of this disease is autosomal dominant. On EEG, patients with creutzfeldt jakob disease will have periodic sharp wave complexes. The cerebrospinal fluid in these patients will be positive for 1433 proteins. We must also check for symptoms of depression as it could present with dementia too. This is known as pseudodementia. So we have to rule it out before checking for other diseases. Note that dementia caused by hypothyroidism, vitamin B12 deficiency, neurosyphilis and normal pressure hydrocephalus can be reversed by treating the underlying cause. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind when you're solving UWorld questions as well as questions on the USMLE. Always look for what's unique and you'll get to the answer right away. I hope this video helped you. If yes, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about med school and USMLE. Thank you.